Well, that's the last fastener for the port side garboard. Uh, the next thing is to put on the broad strake. And the broad strake is the plank that is next to the garboard, second from the keel. So today, we need to start laying out those broad strakes. So stick around. This is the art of boat building. My name is Bob Emerson. I'm a sculptor and a boat builder. My sculptures have always been inspired by nautical and aeronautical imagery. In fact, sometimes people passing by my studio would ask if I'm building a boat. I've always enjoyed the artistry of wooden boats. It seems like I've been building boats for over 40 years, and now I'm building sculptures that float. Welcome to the Art of Boat Building. I first checked that the frames didn't have any bilge curve to them. It's still flat. Since I'd already lined off the hull with the rib bands, as I had shown in episode 5, I transferred that to the top of the frame so I could use that for spiling. I prepared a spiling batten out of a piece of quarter inch plywood that was about 3 inches wide. I then made a hood in pattern and attached it to the spiling batten. After marking out the frame stations, I then began spiling. All of this I covered in episode 17, part 1 of Carville Planking. Well, in laying out this spiling batten on my plank, you can see that there's a definite dog leg uh, in the batten. So the plank is going to be slightly curved. Um, the longest stock that I had was 16 feet. And the other issue I have is that I'm just a few inches shy of making that 16 feet. Uh, I knew this would happen uh, as the boat from the garboard is the, the shortest board, I should say, because the transom is shooting out and the stem is going up, that those planks are slowly going to get longer and longer. So uh, I was hoping that I was going to get by uh, being able to, to just have a single plank on this first broad strike, but it looks like what I'm going to need to do is to make a scarfing jig and put a scarf joint here in the middle. So. That's the next thing to do is to design a scarfing jig. So to get started in designing my jig, I referenced a few of my boat building books and I came up with a criteria that I wanted to uh, use for my design. The first thing was that I wanted to try to use materials that I already had. Um, and also, I didn't want the design to be very complicated, with a bunch of fancy sliding mechanisms and things like that. And the other thing is um, that I wanted to be able to use the plate, router plate that is already on my router that I have in uh, my router table. Uh, that way, I don't have to be switching that out um, all the time. Um, so one of the challenges that I've discovered is how to get the workpiece clamped down really well. And one of the um, designs that I really liked, I found in um, uh, this uh, planking and fastening book uh, by the Wooden Boat series. Uh, I've referenced this before in uh, some of the other projects I was working on. And in there, they have a, a scarfing jig that I really liked. And it was designed by a man named Ed McClave. And he uh, designed it for the Mystic Seaport Museum when they were working on um, one of the big vessels there. Uh, what it, I liked about it is he used this wedge 
in here to put the board, the planking board under tension so that it wouldn't shift around. So with that idea, I um, came up with uh, a kind of basic design um, and fitting the dimensions of things that I needed. So the first thing I decided was that I would do a one to eight slope uh, on the uh, scarf. That's a very common for a half inch planking. So this is basically what I did. I was going to use some three quarter inch material for the base and then cut some of uh, the plywood for the uh, angle. And then for the mechanism that the uh, router will slide on, uh, I'm going to use some hard maple that I had left over from another project. Um, and then the final thing would be the wedge uh, that I'm just going to cut out of some half inch material that I've got uh, that I can uh, put in there. So uh, the first task is to uh, cut out some of the plywood pieces and uh, get started. Now that I've got all of my pieces cut out, it's just a matter of assembling it. Now the way that this will work is we'll put a plank in there like so with this raised up then we can take this wedge which is the same um, eight by one slope and put the wedge in here and then press the board down and push that in and that'll put that board tight in there and then it won't move around when I move the router on there. So the next thing is to put the router carriage together. That's where I have cut some slots in the wood that will slide on here easily, but it won't wiggle around. Now that we have all of our pieces made, I'm putting a three quarter by three quarter inch router bit in my router and we'll uh, get it assembled and see how it works. Okay, we've got it all clamped down and I have a piece of uh, cedar here so we'll slide this in and get just a little bit centered. Put the wedge in here so I'm going to press down on the board and Give it a shot. Pretty decent. Well, sanding, it'll look good. So I've laid out uh, two planks, one on top of the other. I had a slight uh, dog leg so that the uh, batten would fit on there, and I've checked it. 
with my dividers to make sure that I've got enough material on each side. And then I've determined where the center is, uh, where they, the two sort of join. And I gave myself about five extra inches on the end, because since this is a uh, eight to one scarf joint, and this is a half an inch thick, then I need at least four inches for those two to lap over each other. So uh, that extra five inches should uh, give me a little uh, margin of error. So the next thing is uh, I'm gonna cut this and then I'll have a uh, joint that I'll use as the squared up edge to put the scarf on. And I line the board up in the jig here where the router made it, the mark here. I'm gonna line up that edge with that so that that's where my scarf, so the board's actually in here on a little bit of an angle. Well, I learned that going with the grain, I got a much smoother cut than if I went cross grain like I did at the beginning. Uh, so, uh, learn a little bit each time. Well, it fits together really nice. Uh, so now we'll get some epoxy and glue them together. I've put a couple of pieces of Visqueen down here so I don't glue the planks to my sawhorses. And I put just a little bit of cellulose in this epoxy to give it a little bit, be a little bit thicker. I had earlier made some little pencil marks here where it should line up. The uh, secret to clamps with epoxy is you don't want to get it too tight, unlike um, wood glue where you want to actually have a squeeze out. You want to squeeze out enough that you can see that you know it's fully engaged but you actually want a little bit of that epoxy in there. If you squeeze it all out then you won't have a very strong uh, joint. Uh, so anyway we'll, uh, we'll set, let this sit and cure overnight and uh, cut the plank out in the morning. After a little light sanding just to clean up the epoxy on the joint, I've arranged my spiling batten on here so that I can now mark off the points uh, just as I had done uh, with the garboard. Uh, so I'll mark them off and uh, get it cut out.
Uh, one of the added benefits of using a rib band construction for my mold is that I'm able to use turning a clamp around and making it a spreader to, to be able to use the rib band as a point of force to push that plank forward. The other thing where this is lifted up a little bit is we can take a block and a hardwood bridge here up to the top. And then we can use the rib band underneath here to grab a hold of it. And we can use that to press that plank down into, into place there. Perfectly smooth. Well, these cam clamps are really working out well. I'm glad I took the time to make a set of them. Well, the next step is to uh, fasten down the plank. Uh, this was the second time that I was able to offer it up. Uh, just a little bit of trimming and it uh, seems to fit nice and tight. So we'll get busy fastening down this plank and we'll do that the same way that I did in part three, the way I attached the uh, garboard. So we get the drill and some fasteners and get busy. Well, that plank went on there pretty well. I'm pretty happy with the way it's shaping up. Um, next, I'll get uh, started uh, putting the plank on the port side. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you the next time on The Art of Boat Building.